What are the odds, out of all of the bones for man to be made out of, the Bible states which God chose the rib? The only one that is discovered almost recently that is the only bone in the human body to regrow after it is removed. When we read the Bible, it states that God took Adam's rib to make Eve and from them spread all humanity. Normal humans have 46 chromosomes in each cell, divided into 23 pairs, with two copies of chromosome 2. Since Adam's DNA was created with these two original chromosomes 2 in the Y chromosome, for which every normal man has, and that Y chromosome gets passed on to all future males, then it becomes easy to trace the Y chromosome back in history. The sons of these sons have the same Y chromosome as their paternal grandfather, and so on. For this reason, all male offspring from one man have the same Y chromosome. We follow that all the way back to a single point of origin, and we find our answer if creation is true or if evolution is true. The evidence tells us that a single male ancestor, Adam, was the father of all men because there was only one man alive to pass on his Y chromosome to the world population of males. If evolution were true, and there were many male ancestors to all of humanity, then there would be a huge genetic diversity and far more than a single Y chromosome parent of mankind. What does the evidence show? We do only see one Y chromosome, with two chromosome tubes from Adam and no other. Therefore, genetics proves creation as well, as it places a tremendous limit on the amount of genetic diversity we see in the world today. Since that is what we see, not only does it verify creation from a single male ancestor, but it validates biblical account, and there being only one paternal line going all the way back to Adam, with no other males alive, contrary to the evolutionary theory. Their simplistic portrayal to the public of chromosome 2 in combination of looking for only similarities and ignoring the vast differences will be exposed in this video. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Chromosome 2 is used as one of their favorite examples of the ancient ancestral primitive man-human split that occurred around 6 to 7 million years ago during a bottleneck. The general model touted by evolutionary scientists is that the chromosome 2 fusion event was a head-to-head -head telomeric fusion. However, because the alleged fusion site is so small and degenerate, evolutionists in general propose that somehow the telomere repeats must have degenerated, and that this must be why they do not align as expected. So what they do is they lay the two chimp chromosomes, number 12 and 13, next to one another then place the human chromosome 2 next to those, and then they will simply say, well, sitting in the middle of the chromosome, there looks to be two sets of degenerative telomeres. So they say, see, these are the remnants of an ancient telomeres that fused. But then they ignore why it's so degenerate, and never ask, why aren't there more telomere sequences at these two extra telomere locations? Well, because it's not a fusion site. It's not two old telomeres fused together. This is why they do not look like telomeres. You see, they have committed a logical fallacy called affirming the consequent. Basically, it goes something like this. If grass is wet, well, it must have rained. But grass could be wet for a number of reasons. Dew from cold temperature in the morning. Someone watered it. A dog just peed on it. There's a variety of reasons. It doesn't have to only be rain. The same is true here. Just because the human chromosome 2 looks like a fusion event doesn't mean that it is the result of a fusion. That's a logical fallacy. This statement here comes from researcher Casey Luskin regarding the chromosome 2 fusion site. He says, Evidence for fusion in the human chromosome tells you little to nothing about whether humans share a common ancestor with living apes. The human chromosome fusion argument focuses on a fusion event that is specific to the human line, and therefore provides a highly limited form of evidence for human-ape common ancestry. Evidence for a chromosomal fusion event is not evidence for when that event took place, nor is it evidence for the ancestry prior to that event. Basically what he's saying is if humans did diverge from chimps, this fusion only happened once we were already fully human anyway, so it cannot be used as evidence for a human-chimp split. 
Because remember, chimps still have 48 chromosomes, and we only have 46 chromosomes. So it could only have happened after we were fully human, or else chimps today would also have been affected having the same 46 chromosomes as us. Remember everyone, this is just a story. It's not like they go into the fossils and find this evidence. They just noticed a long time ago that the humans were one chromosome short and concluded the obvious, that if evolution was true and we came from chimps, then there must have been a fusion. Their belief dictated the science and what is true to them. So they told the public it was a prediction, but it was obvious that they needed to find this, so they went looking for it. They found a section that fit the criteria to sell the story and never looked back. This is why they looked so hard for evidence to prove it. They need it to be true. So it is. And yes, they are willing to bet it all on this. Look at what Ken Miller, the evolutionist, says. You know what? If we don't find it, evolution is wrong, and we don't share a common ancestor. Sadly for them, this video falsifies the chromosome 2 theory completely, proving we don't share a common ancestor with apes. So we can look at man's assumption of the past or God's unchanging word on the past. Even other secular scientists who believe humans split from orangutans get mad at the biased, hard-headed, dogmatic scientists who won't look at their evidence because they are so set on chimps being the last ancestor to humans. Look at what they say. Molecular comparisons between humans and chimps are often flawed. There is no theory holding that molecular similarity necessarily implies an evolutionary relationship, and molecular data that contradicts the idea that genetic similarity denotes relation is often dismissed, so you heard it from their mouth. Talk about being thrown under the bus by your own side. We already know the evolutionary agenda and why they ignore falsification and evidence that counters the idea, but I feel it's good to point out for those that do not know it. Next, they show the public that there is an extra centromere in the chromosome 2 that is degenerate, thus assuming again that it was part of the ape pre-split. What I'm wondering is why is this evidence? There are many chromosomes that supposedly have degenerate centromeres in them that have never fused or lack them entirely, so it's hardly good evidence. But I digress. We also know errors in centromeres are catastrophic for cells. So, if the ape chromosome fused with a human one, it would have left two active centromeres on the human chromosome too. But there's only one. So, evolutionists have to say the 2P centromere remained active, whereas the 2Q centromere was inactivated. Well, the only way the 2P centromere could fuse and leave behind a broken centromere would be for 2Q in apes to not have satellite. Since 2Q does not, they think this is evidence for the fusion because 2P probably took its place. Since they believe they are looking at a degenerate centromere overwritten by centromere 2P, they do not even bother to look for a function there. So by them assuming this centromere deletion model, they have already concluded that the fusion event is true and did happen, and without question, are just looking for explanations as to why the so-called dead centromere got this way. Because if they look objectively at the evidence, they find that there is no indication of the inactivated centromere remains. It's all hypothetical at best and actually impossible when they discovered the function just recently. So finally, after all these decades, they finally found a scenario to line up with part of their story. You see, they needed some kind of mechanism to go along with the lack of evidence that has plagued them from the start. So now, rather than just use the obvious conclusion that the lack of an extra centromere means chromosome 2 was not a fusion site, they had to come up with an alternative theory that can account for this. They finally have this one, and use it as proof while spouting more lies to kids and playing word games with the public, saying, What we see in human chromosome 2 is exactly what we would expect if there was a fusion. No, it's not. It's their viewpoint based on what they're choosing to look for. So they can either go with that conclusion, which falsifies chromosome 2 as being the result of a fusion, or they can use the unscientific theory that says the active chromosomes fused, or that they broke off prior to that, 
and that Centromere 2Q was inactivated by 2P, which has been found to be an active gene site. Or they can choose the obvious conclusion, that it was never a fused chromosome in the first place, and that is why all these anomalies exist. What they are secretly pushing and trying to tell us what happened is that two active telomere-protected chromosomes in chimps and an active telomere-protected chromosome in humans both at the same time had to all lose their active telomeres at the same time. And these would then all have to fuse to create a new stable Chimera hybrid cross-species chromosome. Get real. That's why they don't tell the public that scenario. Here are the facts. All known cases of mammalian chromosome fusions in living animals involve a specific category of sequences called satellite DNA, which is considered part of the junk DNA, but has recently been found to have a structural and functional role in centromeric function, and satellite DNA is found at and near all telomeres, which is why we should also find evidence at, near, or around this area if there was a fusion. Only telomere to satellite DNA or satellite to satellite DNA are found in the chromosomal fusion sites of living animals in nature, not ever telomere to telomere fusions. Yet, the hypothetical chromosome fusion, which supposedly took ape to man, was a telomere to telomere fusion that leaves no trace of this satellite DNA behind, like it does with all other known mammalian fusions. I want to drill this into your mind. All tested and documented chromosomal fusions to date have clear satellite DNA sequences visible comprising the breakage and subsequent and fused sequence and is not found in humans. This was discovered in 2012 by Ventura. Ventura also goes on to say, in fact, the amount of chimpanzee subtelomeric sequence now mysteriously missing in humans is amazingly large. He states, while variable in size, most of the satellite tracks were 20 kbp, with some exceeding 60 kbp within a given bacterial artificial chromosome. A cloned large insert genomic fragment in a single copy bacterial vector. The rescue device used by the authors hypothesized that maybe the chimp satellite DNA was just randomly deleted in the fusion event. Well, unfortunately for them, the telomere sequence to stall to it. So much for that rescue device. Even despite the assumed deletions of DNA in the fusion event described in the study, their rescue device model cannot even remotely account for the 24 million of base pairs of DNA loss. This is just more woo-woo storytelling as a rescuing device from the evolutionists desperate for their hypothesis to be valid. The hypothetical head-to-head -head fusion site that left no visible satellite DNA evidence of this past event happening is made up. It only lives in the imagination of evolutionists. In all known fusion events that occur in nature in living animals, which is a very rare event, the DNA signature always involves satellite DNA. Therefore, the alleged fusion site should contain satellite DNA if it occurred. A problem the fusion site discoverers openly acknowledged in their initial 1991 paper. This process has never been observed to happen in real time, nor repeated in any experiment. And when telomere DNA to telomere DNA fusions do occur in humans, they unfortunately involve tissues and cell lines associated with cancerous tumors from telomere loss and it is never passed on to the next generation. So the chromosome 2 fusion is pure assumption mixed with storytelling while only ever looking for evidence to validate it while never looking at anything dissimilar and ignoring everything that counters it. Next, let's talk about telomeres. Telomeres are pads at the end of every chromosome to protect it. They are little pads that wear down as we age, exposing us to sickness, disease, and death. There is no way an active site would just collide, break apart, and then randomly fuse because that doesn't just happen. The telomeres would have to be completely degraded first, and when I explain what type of scenario would be required for this later, you will understand better. This fusion also could not be true because healthy telomeres are required for day-to-day -day health. Even losing just some telomere length results in high risk of disease and cancer, let alone an entire telomere. 
Progeria and Warner syndrome are extremely advanced aging diseases, where kids die at the ripe old age of 13. Guess what their health problems come from? You guessed it, lack of telomere length. So now they want you to believe that you can just remove an active telomere on a perfectly functional working chromosome of all things, without any repercussion, and then have a cross-species fusion without any health implications, then pass it on generation to generation, all while there was a genetic catastrophic worldwide bottleneck occurring. Another consideration is that the fusion took place on nuclear DNA, making it different than all known observed fusion events. Also, another factor to consider is that for a telomere to telomere fusion event to take place would be for the TPP1 gene to somehow get deactivated or outright break. Then, not only would the highly conserved TPP1 gene have to break, but if it did break, it has been shown to be involved in brain inflammation and lead to nerve cell dysfunction. The gene also provides instructions for making an enzyme called tripeptidyl peptidase 1, which acts as a peptidase, meaning it breaks down protein fragments into their individual amino acids. So without this gene, even digestion is highly hindered as the body cannot break down protein correctly. You see, telomeres contain a single-stranded DNA binding protein called POT1, which regulates telomere length and protects chromosomes ends. Since telomere length requires that POT1 binds to the TPP1 gene, and the TPP1 is required for the protective function of mammalian POT1 proteins, then it would have to not be present in humans for a fusion event to have occurred. Well, humans do have a highly functional TPP1 gene located on chromosome 11, and it is highly conserved it would have to be non-existent or broken as well to allow the fusion event to occur. They say exactly how end-to-end -end telomere fusions happen is still elusive. The more they delve into the subject, the more problems they find. For example, the human telomeric protein TRF2 also directly protects the human telomeres from end-to-end -end fusions. What we do know is that for any telomeric into end fusion to take place, telomeres would have to shorten far enough to destroy the TRF2 protein that protects chromosomes from fusion. And since TRF2 is encoded in the human body by TERF2, the gene, then the gene itself would first have to break, exposing the ends of chromosomes for the possible fusion to occur. Senescence is growing older. It refers to elderly. Senescence is where we get the word senile from. Senescence is deteriorating. It is the Latin root word for old. The study also raises the possibility that the only possible way a human chromosome into infusion could have occurred would be first through senescence or aging, which hypothetically could cause the loss of the TRF2 from shortened telomeres that may lead to instability of the chromosome, allowing it to be fused. But this is all highly speculative and no study has ever shown anything of the sort. It is not even feasible when you take into consideration two things. The protein is highly conserved, and so is the gene, because it is a vital protein coding gene, and also it does not require ATP to function. And if it does have a problem, it will directly recruit RAD51 as a backup. TRF2 would have to break instantly, they discovered, because it has been shown that TRF2 is recruited to the site of the double-stranded break within two seconds of irradiation. So, if it did break instantly, it would be a destructive domino cascading effect inside the body, and now telomere protection would be gone throughout the genome. This type of damage or loss results in the inevitable death of an organism. They really expect us to believe the fusion event to have occurred in an elderly dying caveman grandpa on his deathbed in ancient times around 7 million years ago and without any medical intervention keeping him alive with no telomere length for protection, which have now degraded to the point where a fusion can happen. Then finally after senescence has set in, these telomeres would have to degrade to near nothing, leaving him exposed to sickness, disease, cancer, and death. Then multiple conserved genes all break, like TPP1, TIN2, and TERF2 would also have to be inactivated or broken as well because they are backup systems for when telomeres start to shrink. Then a fusion would have to occur, 
but that's just the start of the problem. Then, the elderly recipient, lucky enough to survive all of this without medical aid, and now having no telomere length, and missing life-sustaining genes, would have to find a fertile young donor, then miraculously, without Viagra, have sex with her to pass on this new chromosome 2 mutation, and just hope that his new mate was compatible with such a new mutation to make viable offspring. Highly improbable, yet again. And, considering this elderly man would be a heterozygous individual, the odds of having a child become even less. What a joke. And we know for a fact today that people with a fused chromosome of 13 and 14 are less fertile and produce fewer children, then this just adds up to more improbability of the event even happening. Logic dictates that a fused chromosome would not take over a population as well because of this factor. There would be only a handful of people to overtake the population, but according to their theory, there are tens of thousands of individuals alive all around the world. Not only would all of these extremely improbable events have to line up, but there is no actual evidence they ever did. So why would highly conserved genes break? And all of these highly improbable events all managed to take place at the same time while leaving no satellite DNA evidence behind, which all telomere to telomere fusions do leave behind. Why would there be active functioning genes at a fusion site? It doesn't happen. That's your answer. No actual proof of a fusion exists. Only a few hypotheticals in their imagination. In fact, the alleged fusion site where the fusion supposedly took place is actually a highly organized functional gene referred to as Acrin Repeat Domain 30B, which is a protein coding gene. So starting from the assumption of human ape common ancestry, Evolutionists have actually made another failed prediction about structure, fusion, and function of DNA within these cells. This discovery alone shows that this hypothetical cryptic centromere is actually a regular functional region, and not a defunct centromere like they tell the public. They, however, do not see this as a failed prediction, because their theory is already so full of assumptions that hypotheticals are the norm, and all they need to do is just believe something is true and go hunting for evidence, and then just hope that eventually evidence turns up later. This is why they make the theory protected by law and unfalsifiable, because when evidence conflicts or falsifies them, they can just make another hypothesis up and go on like nothing happened. Another even more ridiculous fable they've wielded lately is that maybe there was not a telomere to telomere fusion at all, but maybe the telomere simply fell off before the fusion, and that is why there is no remnant telomere traces. On the surface, a fusion of subtelomeres may seem like a good rescue device for some of the problems inherited in the fusion hypothesis. However, in reality, bringing up the issue of subtelomeres in relation to fusion actually compounds the overall problem, making it far worse. You see, while human telomeres are just around 10,000 bases in length, subtelomere regions on average are 100,000 to 300,000 bases in length and comprise up to 5% of the human genome. So when we include the amount of DNA that should be present in a signature of subtelomeres, the problem becomes far, far worse given that the fusion site is only 798 bases in length. So when they say chromosome 2 fusion event was a special and unique event, they are right. It's so unique that nothing like it exists anywhere and has never existed since nor can it be replicated under any conditions in any lab experiment ever. Evolutionists also made their claim about chromosome 2 fusion prematurely before all the evidence was acquired. Unfortunately for them, the recent analysis of human chromosome 2 has completely contradicted the evolutionary prediction. All known fusions that have occurred are not ever head-to-head -head working telomeres. Also, keep in mind, these types of fusions are rarely, if ever, inherited, and if they are, it's maybe for just one or two generations, and definitely not across an entire species generation after generation. And again, considering that chromosome fusions today create heterozygous individuals which are always less fertile, then these two scenarios together make the probability even more incredible. So besides the fact that gene content and DNA sequences similarity between humans and chimps at and around the hypothetical fusion site is nothing at all alike, there is also a problem with bad logic to overcome. This part is obvious. If chromosome 2 ends in a chimp fused with a human, then 
obviously those ends, 2A and 2B in chimps, would have matching genes in that same area, which they do not. Another way they trick you is that they rename chimp chromosomes 12 and 13 to 2A and 2B to reflect this fusion assumption as a fact that we did diverge from them. Similar to how they give primates the same blood type names even though they are nothing alike. Just more lies from evolutionists. No homology exists for the fusion region to the respected ends of chimpanzee chromosome 2A and 2B. This was discovered by Ventura in 2012. Ventura attempted to hybridize the fusion site region to chimpanzee chromosomes and reported, We observed no signals to the chimpanzee's subcap locations using phosmid clones from the chromosome 2 region. Next, only 28% of telomeric repeats matched. That's 33,080 bases compared to the normal human centromeres that range in length between 250,000 to 5 million bases long. There is also no positional correspondence for the cryptic centromere site either. You can see in this picture that 10% is missing. This results in about 24 million DNA bases. Such a large amount of genetic loss would be catastrophic and fatal to life. Lastly, if this fusion site location was or is worthless, then there should obviously not have any life-supporting functional genetic features, right? Well, it is highly expressed in hundreds of different cells and tissue types. Functional genes required for life itself do not just randomly sprout up out of nowhere from a new fusion event. That's illogical, not to mention unscientific. How could an organism even live prior to this gene existing? In 2013, it was discovered that this supposed fusion site is actually an integral part of the gene called DDX11L2, which is a functional RNA helicase gene expressed in at least 255 cells and tissue types. So it is expressed in 16 out of 31, half of all major tissue types and therefore a life-supporting gene. It is also an epigenetic regulator of histone modifications. Over 80 transcription factors bind to the DDX11L2 gene in and around its promoter regions, discovered in 2014 by Anderson. In the alleged fusion region, a second promoter, which you can see in the gray oval shape in the middle, has at least 12 transcription factors that have been shown to bind there, including RNA polymerase 2, the key enzyme that transcribes genes. It is not a protein coding gene, but it functions exactly like them. They have exons for coding regions that end up in the final RNA molecule. They have introns, which are intervening regions that do not end up in the final RNA molecule. They have promoter regions and control regions exactly like protein coding genes. The matter of fact, your genome contains over twice as many long non-coding RNAs genes as it does protein coding genes. These are critical for health and growth development, and when they mutate, they lead to disease, cancer, and developmental problems. You don't get highly important functional genes by slamming chromosomes together that life could not exist before these happened. If you are a critic and don't think the gene is important or has any pivotal function, then put your money where your mouth is and call up NIH and tell them you want to do a gene knockout test and have it deleted. Prove us all wrong. We all know you wouldn't dare. Now, if you look at the upper right-hand portion of this picture, you can see an arrow pointing to the left. That shows the direction that the DDX112L gene transcription is going. Notice, the active gene exists inside the alleged fusion site. Fusion sites never have this, ever. You cannot have parts of a gene on separate chromosomes and then randomly have them fuse by chance and then have a new functioning gene. That's unrealistic and not how it works. This gene serves several regulatory functions, making it a highly expressed and highly complex gene, and also, more importantly, not a gene found in any primate. So it is pure fiction to say that an active functional telomeres crossed species and then fused together, then assume that this event magically produced necessary functional genes required for life. Other biased critics who won't let go of their dying theory, like Jackson Wheat, in his attempt to falsify Tompkins, Jackson Wheat strawmans him and then goes on to explain how a gene can arise and move over a fusion site. 
He then points to a 2017 study, which Jackson states a gene formed over the fusion site. If you read the paper, it directly states that the new gene went through relocalization after it formed, meaning it arose and then moved over the fusion site. But this is not what Tompkins says happened. He states that the transcription is being read over the fusion site, and it's the fusion site that is inside the gene, not the gene moving over the fusion site, not that the gene moved over the fusion site. If it was moving, it would give evidence that it was moving, and still moving, and eventually pass it. And that is not what Tompkins says. Jackson Wheat strawmans Tompkins. Tompkins' argument relies on the false premise that a gene can't form that spans a fusion site after the fusion event. His chart has an arrow, and to a layman, it looks like it shows the direction the gene is moving. But what is actually being shown is the direction of transcription, how it is read by the RNA polymerase, not the direction in which the gene is moving. It is not. The gene is inside the centromere, and these critics never mention the absence of satellite DNA. It is the coup de grace to their entire story. So what is the evolutionary rescuing device in regards to this fusion site? Well, some lie and try to say that the chromosome 2 fusion was a Robertsonian fusion. They try to invoke this to try to explain why no remnant telomeres are found. But this is impossible because for one, a Robertsonian fusion means a centromere of one chromosome has fused with the telomere of another, which results in a loss of one short arm. And since the human chromosome 2 is supposedly a fusion between two telomeres, then even by definition, it is impossible for the human chromosome 2 fusion to be a Robertsonian fusion. Also, by claiming a Robertsonian fusion here, he has also now falsified his own chromosome 2 model, because if it was a fusion, then there would be no remnants of a second centromere inside the chromosome like they believe, because it would have fused and not left a degenerate remnant. So the critics are both wrong by definition and logic, and active telomeres do not fuse. And if the telomeres broke off, like some of our critics say, well, obviously there would be no remnants of a defective telomeres then, would there be? It's the paradigm driving the conclusion. We evolved from apes, so it has to be true. And therefore, any evidence like this which falsifies the theory can just be ignored. Why? Because evolution is true. See that circular reasoning and poor logic? No matter which way you look at it, they're wrong. These comments not only expose the scientific ignorance of atheists like those who live to troll creationist channels, but these rescue devices show their desperation and need to prove it to be true when they have no actual understanding of the subject and their outright willingness to say anything at any time to try to refute it. Feel free to see the comments on Godless Engineer's video here, under the comment thread by Max Mac. kind of got blindsided by some uh, satellite DNA stuff that he brought up during the last debate I did with him. <laughs> I kind of got blindsided by some uh, satellite DNA stuff that he brought up during the last debate I did with him. <laughs> now I give you 25 reasons why the alleged chromosome 2 fusion site is a lie. First, we would expect thousands and thousands of repetitive sequences at the proposed fusion site, but we only find several hundred. You see, thousands of intact telomere motifs at the fusion site would be expected if the evolutionary model was true and that intact telomere somehow failed. The exact opposite is what we see, falsifying the theory immediately. Second, interstitial telomeric repeat sequences are found throughout the human chromosomes and not unique to only human chromosome 2. And these repeats perform a functional regulatory role in DNA. Next, 
the alleged fusion site is actually a functional promoter element, which is expressed in half of all major tissue types and also serves regulatory functions, making it a highly expressed and highly complex gene not found in apes. Next, one does not move up the evolutionary ladder by losing information. Humans have 6,000 less genes than chimps, with 50 that are not found in any chimpanzee. Next, we only find several hundred repetitive sequences, one-tenth the size of a real centromere. Sequences are not specific to centromeres found throughout human chromosomes. Six, we should find traces of satellite DNA sequences at, around, or near the fusion site. We do not. Seven, the highly constrained TPP1 gene in all humans acts to prevent fusion. 8. TRF2 protects chromosome ends by maintaining the correct structure of telomeres. TRF2 would have to break instantly to allow a telomere-to-telomere -telomere fusion head-to-head -head event to occur. 9. The alleged cryptic centromere site is a key sequence found within the functional gene Ancrium Repeat Domain 30B, a protein coding gene, also known as ANKRD 30BL, covering both intronic and exonic sequences. 10. The active DDX11L2 gene is located inside the fusion site. Genes are never like this. 11. Telomeres don't occur in the middle of genes, and genes aren't ever around telomeres. Both the alleged site of fusion and the cryptic centromere of human chromosome 2 are positioned inside functional genes. Furthermore, the alleged site of fusion has been proven to be a functional promoter in the second intron of a non-coding RNA gene. 12. Phantom 4, Phantom 5, and ENCODE are all databases. All three databases show transcript initiation within the 798 bases alleged fusion site sequences in the classic transcription start site cluster signature for a gene promoter, discovered in 2015 by Haberly. 13. Chromosome fusion in humans today leave people less fertile, lowering the chance to spread the mutation. 14. No homology exists for the fusion region to the ends of chimpanzee chromosomes 2A and 2B. 15. Interstitial telomeric sequences discovered were involved in gene regulation, especially in regard to their role in transcription factor binding and transcription start site activity and translation. All five interstitial telomeric sequences discovered were located in the exons of protein coding genes. 16. Sometimes chromosomes do fuse in humans, specifically 13, 14, 15, 21, and 22, but they only ever fuse acrocentrically, meaning only the small p-arm of centromeres fuse in what is called a Robertsonian fusion. Nothing at all what chromosome 2 fusion would have been like. 17. There are two main classes of MSY sequences shared between two species, ampliconic and X-degenerate. Humans always have X-transposed sequences, but the chimp does not. 18. If human chromosome 2 were indeed the result of an end-to-end -end fusion from chimp chromosome 2A and 2B, then we would expect to find the fusion sites surrounded by DNA sequences highly similar. We do not. 19. The precise match in gene order between human chromosome 2 and the corresponding chimpanzee chromosome is actually unknown. Unfortunately, when the chimpanzee DNA sequence was explained, the researchers did not independently determine the gene order along all the chimpanzee chromosomes, and this led to a flawed overestimation of the overall gene similarity between the two species. However, the two chimpanzee chromosomes for which the gene order has been precisely determined, the human chromosome Y and the chromosome 22, the Y chromosome possesses a gene order dramatically different from humans. So, the overall match in gene order between human chromosome 2 and the appropriate chimp chromosome 12 and 13, aka 2A and 2Q, is not clear. So, when they use it as evidence, they are speaking from a place of ignorance or lies. All we know is that there are low numbers of repetitive sequences and active beneficial genes found in these locations. 20. The alleged degenerated telomeres and second centromere do not exist in the human chromosome 2 
they have functional DNA elements and genes. 21. The human chromosome 2 is smaller by 10%. That's around 24 million DNA bases compared to chimps. 22. Evolutionists cannot account for why the ancestral centromeric sequences do not match in humans. Their two rescue devices for this discrepancy is that maybe the chimp chromosome 2p overrode 2q long ago, or maybe the human-specific relic centromeric sequences got lost in the existing chimpanzee genomes of today. So either way they look at it, the evidence doesn't line up looking at neither human nor chimp. So with no evidence at all, they go back to their bread and butter and just make up stories to sell to the public. Anything they can do to align with the fable that they made up. 23. There are about 150,000 base pairs that are in the human chromosome that are not in the chimp chromosome. It's not just some simple fusion like they say. Do not be deceived. 21. Newly discovered functions of interstitial telomeric repeat sequences is the death blow to the fusion event. The regulatory roles are not evidence for a fusion event, but hard evidence against it, because by finding these interstitial telomeric sequences throughout the internal regions of chromosomes, they cannot be used as evidence for leftover junk telomeres by way of a fusion, because they also exist on other chromosomes, including chromosomes that have never been fused. Then the news gets worse for them, when they discover them to have transcription factor binding domain properties and transcription start sites associations. These discoveries have now falsified the assumption that they had all along, that what they thought they were looking at were leftover telomere remnants inside the chromosome from a fusion event but instead are active functional DNA elements and not leftover telomeres from a fusion. Therefore, the interstitial telomeric repeat sequences show strong evidence of design rather than the evolutionary accidents. 25. Logic. Ask yourself, why would primitive caveman go into a harmful extinction level bottleneck and modern day man come out? It's not logical and violates Occam's razor on every level. As telomeres in humans shorten, they lose their protection ability, and the more prone to disease and death one becomes. If they were to break off altogether, then a catastrophic cascade of disease would be imminent for the individual, let alone a cross-species fusion event in an elderly individual who would now have to spread the mutation into the population even though it is now known that heterozygous individuals like that are less fertile. As you can see, Plenty of evidence exists to falsify the chromosome 2 fusion hypothesis, yet the fable lingers on. The evidence is ignored because their entire ape-to-man theory hinges on this single concept being true, and it is not. The fact is, chromosomal disorders are the norm. Between 1979 and 2003, the number of babies born with Down syndrome increased by 30%. Other types of chromosomal disorders include trisomy 13 and 18, Klein-Fettel syndrome, and Turner syndrome. These are four types of chromosomal mutations, deletions and duplications, inversions and translocations. There are many different chromosomal disorders, and they can even have a variety of symptoms. Possible symptoms of these disorders may include both mild and severe levels of mental retardation, heart and circulatory issues, and cleft palates. Other symptoms may include seizures and learning disabilities, and chromosome fusions in humans today always have a negative consequence as well. Nothing about a chromosome fusion would push a primate to a human. Consider speciation through chromosomal fusions for just a second. Six instances of speciations in house mice on Mandiria within the past 500 years have been the consequence of geographic isolation and multiple chromosomal fusions, yet they tell us just a single fusion in humans was the major genomic cause to the shift of humans from chimps. Yet, some of these Mandirian mice have undergone nine fusions. Yet, they are no closer to being anything other than a mouse, or even physiologically different mouse. So again, even though all these fusion events have occurred, not a single new species of mouse is closer to being something physiologically different than the house mouse that it was before the fusion. Nothing anatomically or physiologically different whatsoever, and certainly not as different as a human is from an ape, which supposedly was just a single fusion event. 
Here's one final thing to consider. Logically, we can look at the chromosomes and notice that a common theme is occurring. They start at 1 and go down in size, shrinking as you go up the chromosome ladder in numbers. So what are the odds that a fusion would result in a perfect ratio in size to fit with this criteria? Because when we look at the chimp chromosome chart, it does not match our lineup. All their so-called evidence is just presumption that we are related to apes, and thus anything correlated is just proof of that to be true. For them, inside the human chromosome too, there seems to be what looks like remnants of a centromere sequence. To them, that's just all the evidence they need to believe that there was one. That's wrong. And again, there seems to be what looks like the remnants of a telomere sequence as well. So again, that is just enough evidence that there was a telomere. All of these are assumptions. That is not evidence. As I have already stated, the centromere is an active gene, and active telomeres do not fuse. And if the telomeres fell off, well, obviously there would be no remnants of a defective telomeres then, would there be? You should be able to tell by now, it was a highly improbable event that no one observed in real time to prove it. And with so many pieces of evidence that showed the opposite to be true, and how well protected the region is from fusion, and active functional genes in the area, and the fact that the mythical event left no evidence behind that it ever happened, then we can be fairly certain to add this hypothetical event to the junk bin of evolutionary falsification failures like the rest. In conclusion, I would just like to say that without a chromosome 2 fusion, the ape-human split could have never occurred. And the fact remains that if a chromosome fusion did occur, it only occurred in the human line, and therefore it is not evidence of an ancestral split between the two species, and therefore not evidence for evolution. That alone falsifies the theory and invalidates the ape-human split model that says that this occurred 6.5 million years ago, where humans diverged from apes. It is over. Evolution lost. Most people today do not realize that their science indoctrination comes by the way of the news. The single best mass indoctrination tool in existence. Did you know that your National Geographic is owned by 21st Century Fox, an American conservative cable television news channel? And you really expect honesty and for them to give you accurate, unbiased scientific information?